Be empowered. Be strong. Take charge. Speak life. Live life abundantly. Get with it now. You are now entering the chat room. Health chat with Coach Jean, that is, where we debate, debunk, educate, empower, impart, and raise awareness on all things related to health, healing, and holistic well-being, body, mind, and spirit. Let's go. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Welcome back for another episode here in the chat room. Health Chat with Coach Jean, that is. I am your girl, God's girl, Nurse Coach Jean Turner, a.k.a. Miss Fit Foxy 50 and Beyond, on a mission to teach others just like you, stewardship over their health, health in every dimension of your life, because an imbalance in any one dimension of wellness creates this harmony or an imbalance throughout our entire being. This, my friends, is holistic health. Health and well-being within every dimension of what makes us whole and complete. So thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, all thanks, glory, and honor to God. And so today, you know, just to share a little bit, I spent most of it attending a virtual mindfulness summit. And if you've been tuning in the health chat with Coach Jean for any amount of time, back in March, uh, episode number 37 to be exact, we did an episode of mindfulness. It was on mindfulness meditation. However, you know, I learned something new today that I didn't think of when I um, was on the air sharing uh, with you all uh, that information and that awareness on mindfulness meditation. So, you know, most of the time we think of mindfulness, we think of meditation, right? Being aware of your present state, being in the present moment, you know, focusing on your breath, being still and just breathing and focusing on the moment. But today, it really, this summit brought it all home for me. And so, you know, it's like I always say, you know, about the imbalance in any dimension creates this harmony throughout the body. But what I learned today is, yes, mindfulness is more than just meditation. Mindfulness is a whole entire body and soul practice. It's a comprehensive approach to holistic health and healing and not only just a form of meditation. Mindfulness really has more to do with self-awareness and self-actualization that extends just beyond breathing and taking in breath and being calm and stress-free. So it is important to have these moments of self-awareness, right, throughout our day. Because the word of God tells us, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Fear not. Be anxious for nothing. Do not worry. And all these different emotions that God said, look, don't do any of those things, right? And we allow sometimes these emotions and, you know, and other emotions to manifest. And when they manifest, you know, They begin to affect our entire being in negative ways. And so there must be self-awareness, self-actualization, okay? Be aware of how these emotions affect you. Be aware of what it is in your immediate moment, in the present moment that you need. You got to be aware. What is it that you need right now? Do you need to be calm? Do you need courage? Do you need to be brave? Do you need some peace? Do you need some joy? But whatever it is, connect with that. So what we think, how we feel matters, and it does affect us body, mind, soul, and spirit. And so self-awareness. This week here in the chat room, you know, the title of tonight's 
episode. This week's episode is activating the warrior in you. Uh, Self-awareness, self-actualization is only the beginning, but that's where it starts. Having a better understanding of who you are, you know, understanding and seeing yourself as a unique and separate individual, because then and only then will you be empowered to make change, to change your mindset, to build on your strengths and areas you know, that you wish to improve upon on your wellness journey. And so tonight, my guests and I are going to chat about self-awareness and activating the warrior in you. So let's pray and get it popping, shall we? Most gracious Father, we thank you for another week, another opportunity, Father God, another episode to share the gift of health, healing, and a holistic, whole-person approach to well-being with these, your people. Help us all to become more aware of who we are in you, that we see ourselves as you see us, mighty warriors in your kingdom. I pray something shared will bless every listener and that all will experience your peace, your love, your joy, health, healing, and happiness henceforth now and forevermore. And it's in your precious son's name, Jesus, we do ask and pray these things. Amen, amen, and amen. And so my guest this evening is none other than the fabulous Leslie Denman. She writes with passion, talks with excited inflection and lights up crowds with her bold funny, tell it like it is testimony. Leslie's mission is both a powerful speaker, certified life purpose coach, and as a human being, it's simple. To help women and teenage girls find purpose and prosperity, living out what they were called to do. A well-known expert on building no-nonsense strategies around birthing big dreams, she has also been featured in many publications and news programs, including but not limited to CNN Headline News, Ebony and 90.9 KCBI Radio in the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area here in the States. She was recognized by Stiletto Magazines as one of the 50 most amazing women on the web. She is the recipient of the AWOW Impact Life Award and was featured on the cover of Time Magazine as part of the Time and J Beats Project. She is the super proud author of The Purpose Diva's Guide to Dating, Seven Things Every Girl Should Know. A former single mom and three times, not once, not twice, but three times breast cancer conqueror. She says survivor, I say conqueror. Leslie infuses audiences with possibility as she shares her own personal testimony on how she activated her faith to overcome significant adversity and achieve success as an entrepreneur, a parent, and as a woman. Leslie uses her podcast, Grown Black Women Success, to talk about the joys and challenges that come along with success. And her motto, it's not about living life, it's about living life on purpose. So, Leslie, are you here in the virtual building, girlfriend? Coach G, yes, I am. I'm here, and I'm grateful to be here. I am so grateful you're here, too, girl. <laughs> Welcome to the chat room. What's going on? All right. <laughs> oh, not much. We praying to get to pop it. I love it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, girl. You know how I do. You already know how I do, girl. I like to have fun, but I like to get it on and popping, too, right? Amen. (laughs) Amen. So, look, before we dive in, is there anything else about yourself that you'd like our listeners to know about you? You know, I think you pretty much said it all. It's not about living life. It's about living life on purpose. I mean, we we can get up every day and ask ourselves, you know, same day, different stuff, or we can get up and say, okay, how can I make a difference in this world? How can I, uh, you know, bring joy? How can I just live life 
in my full expression. So no, you you pretty much hit it on the head. Oh wow, I love it. I love it. That's you know what, and we're gonna get into your testimony in a minute. But it's something about going through some kind of challenge, particularly in your health, that just gives yes. you a whole nother perspective on life, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. You don't. You no longer think about. Um, Time is something that is infinite. You realize that we are only here for a short amount of time, as we say on this side of heaven. And you wake up every day with a little bit more intention. You wake up with a little bit more uh, focus. And your tolerance for drama is at an all-time low. (laughs) Girl, low to zero. Low to zero. That's what I tell folks. Low to zero. Zilt. Nada. Okay. (laughs) Yes. 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 I ain't got time. I don't have time. But look, so this week's topic, Activate the Warrior in You. Um, And you know me, registered nurse, holistic health nurse coach. You know, I believe that before we actually touch on, you know, activating the warrior in you, you know, Mm -hmm. that wherever one is in their current health status or on their wellness journey, that first we must be aware of who we are, right? And like for our listeners, I don't mean, you know, like my name is Jean or you're Leslie, right? But correct from a posture of your uniqueness, your individuality, how you personally respond to challenges and situations, you know, knowing your core values, knowing what triggers different emotions in you, knowing your body and when something doesn't look feel or smell right, all it is to me is self-awareness. And so you, my friend, not one, not two, but a three-time breast cancer conqueror, my God. So I want to start out by asking you to share, how did self-awareness play a role in your journey through that time in your life? Wow. Oh, it, I mean, when my first diagnosis, I was 29 years old. I had, at that time, I had just got married, had two young kids, and you're thinking about the rest of your life. And so with this diagnosis, I was for the first time thinking about dying. You know, it was a possibility until I got confirmation from the doctor. They wanted me to come into the office, and I'll never forget, I was at work, and I got the call, and they wanted me to come in. And I'm like, look, just tell me on the phone right here, right now. Do I have cancer or not? And it was like, you know, you tested positive. You know, they give you the medical terminology. But in that moment, I heard the spirit of God say, you should live and not die. And mm. so I took that to heart and I believed that because anyone that has had an, that type of encounter with God, you can't really describe it. You just know that it is from heaven. That was like, you know, back in that day, uh, it wasn't heard of, but that was like a tweet from heaven is how I, I, I received it. And I said to God in that moment, God, if you would spare my life and you would show me what it is that I am supposed to be doing, I would spend the rest of my life doing that. And the fact that I'm still here lets me know that I still have a work to do and God was still holding true to his promises that I should live and not die. And so from that moment, I took that to heart, mind, body, spirit, soul, I shall live. So death even though I had moments, but that fear not would kick in. And with the second diagnosis, I have to be honest, I was kind of a little upset. It was 17 years later, and I was like, not again. Like, seriously? Like, really? And so I went through that with a bit of a spiritual attitude because I felt like it was an attack from the enemy because I was beginning to slowly put my life back together because during that time, I would lose my father to cancer. I would lose my mom to cancer. And the enemy was trying to play with my mind that, yeah, this is how you're going to go too. But I held on to that first confirmation from God, you shall live and not die. And if that wasn't enough, two years after the second diagnosis, I will be diagnosed a third time. And so this time in my spirit, I felt that I was elevated from like soldier to warrior because I was like, this is, okay, this is something bigger than me. Like I got to walk this thing out for real by faith. And that's what I did. I activated my faith. Ooh, so, okay. So you said a whole lot now. <laughs> so let me tell you what I heard. Let me just say uh-huh. what, what 
her Dean heard. I heard in that, number one, you knew who you were in Christ. So Absolutely. that when he said, when he said, you shall live and not die, because you knew who you were in him, a child of mm-hmm. his, and mm-hmm. that he is faithful to the promises in his word, mm-hmm. that that in itself, you, you that was self-awareness because you knew who you were, who you were. That self-awareness itself. So I heard that, right? Yeah. And that you, um, you just you just trusted him. Now I gotta admit that second time and third time I'd have been like, Lord, what? The what? 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 And it was seventeen years later after the first diagnosis. Yes, seventeen years. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. Wow. And uh. Yeah, that was that was that's why I said I got kind of a little bit angry because that was I was getting ready. I felt like I was coming out, you know, with everything that I had lost. And that time I got divorced and lost both my parents and, you know, all the things that come with going through treatment and your body. Finally, you know, it takes a, a while for chemo and all of those things to get out your body completely. And so I was in I was heading in a good direction and then bam, you know, and I'm sure that everyone listening has had those moments where they run up against that wall where the enemy says, oh, I'm not through with you yet. Uh-uh, uh-uh. no. Mm-hmm. But then I heard, I, I felt like that was my have you considered my servant Job moment. And that's wow. how I took it. Because I knew I heard from God. And I know that he is not a man that he should lie. And so I knew that I would live and not die. But I was still a little upset. Like, why are you still bothering me? Like, would you just leave me alone? Seriously, because... I knew this was not from God. I knew this was God allowed or God ordained. And so Mm. I had to develop that mindset. Like, okay, I got to activate my faith to even go through this now. And then when you go through that, it's like you got to know that you know that you know that you are a child of God for real. You can't waver Mm -hmm. in it. You got to stand in it. You got to know it. And it's going to test everything in you, your fear, your doubt, when all of that. And it's not that it won't happen. It's just that when it does happen, you understand that with that temptation comes, his word says he'll give you a way of escape. That temptation doesn't necessarily be about stealing or uh, sleeping with somebody's spouse and all of that. It's a simple thing. Like when, when the enemy tries to come in and have you fear and all of that, look for the escape. And the escape for me was the first word he gave me when the first diagnosis was given to me. You shall live mm-hmm. and not die. And not die. My God, my God. And so you brought up something very, uh, another point, though, because it starts in the mind. Yes. It starts in the mind, self-awareness, that activating the warrior, our faith, our hope in Christ. All It is a mindset, right? It begins yes. in the mind. And, you know, yes. we have to transform. That took a renewing of your mind. That took you being transformed in the renewing of your mind, the second diagnosis and the third that di- like, oh my God, I'd have been like, Lord, oh my Lord, what are you <laughs> what? Because look, after the after the one time with me, I that was Job. Yes. I was felt like Job did. I'm like, I you know, and you know, you hear the expression all the time. Well, maybe not all the time, but you hear it often enough, right? God gives his um his uh, toughest battles to his fear, fiercest warriors or so. How's that yes, saying go? Yes. You know what I'm trying to say. Yes, but yeah. yes, yes. It, it, it takes a mind renewal. It takes being transformed and renewed in your mind. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Since then, how, well, let me ask this first. At what point during that health crisis, and even, was it after the first time or after the second time, or when in your life, going through all of that, did you realize that something needed to change that maybe it might have been the way you viewed health or maybe the, your, your mindset, your way of thinking? At what point through all of that did, did that did that come about? Actually, that's a good question. I would take this third diagnosis. Uh, the first diagnosis, you know, you take it like a soldier, you, you endure and you think, whew, okay, made it through that. 
And the second diagnosis, I was such in a angry mode and not, you know, angry and said, I'm going to fight. I was guess I was in soldier mode. But the third diagnosis, I started thinking, okay, what's the lesson in this? What do I need to do different? I need to, am I participating fully in my own healing? And mm -hmm. that brought about uh change and it started in my mind first you know and it, it started with me thinking okay Leslie see yourself heal at whole what does that look like the work that you felt like you've been called to do are you prepared mind body and soul to do it and I started thinking about what that participation looks like I envisioned it in my head and I literally took it meal by meal by meal because I found out in all of that that I am an emotional eater. And so rather than, you know, looking like what I'm going through, I, and rather than worrying people and, you know, people ask how you're doing and stuff, because I was careful how I, how and what I shared, I internalized a bit and I just ate. That was my comfort zone because you don't want to bother people with what you're going through. People don't understand that this is like, it, it attacks your body in so many different levels that, it's like every, no two days are the same. And so this third diagnosis, I have now gained about 80 pounds, right? And I'm like, I got to do something different. And so I made a spiritual choice first. I mean, I made a natural choice first. And then I went to God in the spiritual to start dealing with my emotional eating. And so since our last conversation, girl, I am down 10 pounds since our last conversation. Ah, you go, girl. Oh, you go, yes. girl. Yes. 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 <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And it was truly, uh, again, just being conscious, like you said, fully in the moment, thinking about what I'm eating uh, planning and realizing that, you know, meal prep and planning is good, but it may not be for everyone. And so I'm one of those people where I need something simple and easy because I'm just like quick and on the go, even working from home. I move from project, to project, phone call to phone call, Zoom to Zoom. Right. And so I'm not, I'm not that, you know, cook it all up, put it in the refrigerator. I'm one of those, let me buy things that I can grab and put together real quick, a quick salad and change that salad up a little bit. And so it has really made a difference. And I feel a lot better. And so, yeah, and that just started, like you said, in the mind first. And I had to, I had, you know, they said, if you can whoop it in your mind, you can whoop it anywhere else. And so I had to whoop that emotional eating in my mind, like every meal, every decision, like, listen, think about this, take a few minutes, walk away and come back in 10 minutes. I don't have anything in my refrigerator that tempts me. So, yeah, and if you would look over here, you'd be like, is this poor child eating? <laughs> but, nah, well, yes, I, I am, but maybe I'm just eating in a different way. That, but not me. <laughs> no, maybe somebody, but not me. Because you can come look in my refrigerator and all this organic spinach and tofu and yes. different things like that and fruit and cold-pressed juices, you know, that freshly squeezed from straight from the veggie and the fruit. and the, You know, no, I wouldn't yes. say that. But you said something else that was key, Leslie, intentional. Part yes. of self-awareness, yes, there must be intention. Yes. We yes. have to be yes. intentional. And that's key that yes. you said that. But also, girl, yeah, what also got my attention, you said you had to think to yourself, am I participating in my own healing because yes. faith without work is dead. God Absolutely. heals us, right? He heals yes. us, but I believe we have a responsibility to maintain that healing that he has graced us with. Absolutely. Wholeheartedly. Yes, that is so uh, true. And, and it starts with just making that conscious decision. Like, okay, God has done his part. Now I got to do my part. And even if you're not clear what that part looks like, do what you know to do and then trust God to, to, to guide you with the rest. And while we were talking about that, I was talking, thinking about the food, even the intentionality when you're eating healthy to understand that that food doesn't last forever. So I have to make more trips, conscious trips to the store now because, you know, uh, when you're eating healthy and natural and organic, 
it the, the shelf life is not as long as if you got a bag of chips and a soda or something. So it's like a complete change, but it is a good change because I am I'm I'm conscious and present and and I feel good about the things that I put in my body. Now does that mean that I I'm not no vegetarian, no vegan, none of that. I'm just a good old country girl trying to try to do my part to fulfill my purpose on the earth by staying here a little bit longer and really seeing my body as the temple for real. Like this is the temple where the Holy Spirit dwells. And I need to get all of this junk out. And we're talking about food, but it's also just uh, drama and negativity and all of that. Just just a whole a holistic approach. And food was my uh, addiction. You know, that was my stumbling block. But in that, I had to dig in and really become aware of the other things that were causing me to eat. And so Mm -hmm. when you start focusing on that, you realize you don't have a lot of time for outside drama, honey. It's just enough to keep yourself right, to keep yourself moving on the right path. So I can't allow any other outside drama, negativity, uh, all of that to come and can. I'm I'm, I'm cleaning out my temple and then allow other outside forces to come and just dump back in. No, that's not how that works, honey. I'm cleaning it out every nook and cranny. And it's a journey. It is. I look at your uh, IGs and I see you working and getting ready to go. I was like, I saw you dancing the other day in the living room. I said, okay, all right, okay, I see you, coach. Do your thing. <laughs> Girl, I'll be trying to get my exercise in any way I can. And lately, yes. I'll admit that I've been a little slack. Coach Dean is very transparent. Lately, I've been a little slack. And that's because <laughs> I was a runner, right? I was a marathon chick. And so, Mm. Walking is oh I, I'm just I, I'm just well oh, I'm so over it so I was like I got to get back into Zumba and dance and something else so yeah you look I was like Lord I've just been so caught up in the grind I can't be no hypocrite now I got to get back on my game with my exercise yeah so that's what you yeah saw. yeah because I was like even Coach G sometimes got to remind I got to tell myself girl you slipping or you slipping now. Get get back get back <laughs> on it now. Don't be no hypocrite now. So yeah, I'll be having them conversations with myself, girl, and we got them like, Lord, I can't be being no hypocrite. What is wrong with me lately? You know. But anyway, but sometimes he'll just have you still. So, you know, I go through those times too where I may not exercise like I normally do or whatever, or I'll shut off the phone and don't be, you know into a lot of stuff because those are those moments I feel Holy Spirit leading me to be still. And during those times, I won't always exercise. So I'll admit that. But, you know, you were talking about your eating and your food, right? But, Mm -hmm. you know, you know the reason you got to keep making them frequent trips, right? Because the food that's good for you don't have those preservatives in there. That's why they have a short attempt life, you know? And in some countries, like when I was stationed, when we were stationed in Germany, Germany shop for their dinner, what they're going to fix every day. Why? Because they eat a heck of a, now they eat the, they eat the schnitzels and all of that. But they buy a lot of fresh produce and grow a lot of stuff too to go with their schnitzels and stuff. And they shopping for that every day. So, you know, that's why. Wow. And all them words you can't pronounce and stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's about making that conscious decision. And, you know, something else you said, and I'm going to move on. But something else you said, too. You are aware. That, see, that's your self-awareness again, right? When you activate the warrior in you, that's why self-awareness is so important. You said, I, you're not that type of chick to be meal planning. You got to, yeah. you know, do do how you do to make sure that you're making the better choices. And that's a part of that self-awareness and knowing you and what works better for you and your schedule and your lifestyle. So I just wanted to share that with our listeners. I don't know if they caught that or not. You know what I'm saying? Yes, because we're all different. Mm-hmm. We're all different. Yes, yes. And, and that is because when you are on this journey to a healthier lifestyle, which I believe on some level we all just, we all striving for, and those that are finding it challenging, it may be like me that they have not come to a place of really taking the time, as you said, to really look at why this is happening. You know, everything is so convenient, 
but it takes an intentional slowing down and you want to do it before you're forced to do it. And when I thought about my life and I thought about, okay, I don't want this to be a quick fix. I want this to be a lifestyle change that six months from now, it is just a part of who I am. You know, because you can take diet pills and do all of these things. And if you haven't dealt with the real issue of this, there hasn't been a true uh, health conscious transformation in your life, a healthy lifestyle uh, alternative, then you're going to resort back to that same thing. You're going to return back to it. But when you are intentional and you're doing things that fit within your lifestyle, who you are, how you like to eat, how you purchase, your budget, all of those things, and if you start doing that, then, you know, you look up six, seven months from now and you're like, okay, wow, I've shed it 10 pounds, 20 pounds, whatever. It was natural. I didn't really force it. Like, now, mind you, I said I lost 10 pounds, but you didn't hear me say I worked out. Because, honey, that's a whole other journey we're getting to. <laughs> I joined the gym. I joined the gym. I went a couple of times. But, you know, I just like, you know what, I, the best I can do right now, being honest with myself, is I could just eat healthier. And drink more water. Because, honey, I love me some Dr. Pepper. But just mm-hmm. making those shifts proved beneficial. It really right. did. And now I can do it without even thinking about it. Like, it's, I don't even, like, I used to see a drive through and just subconsciously just, whoop, just drive up in there. Make myself hungry. Make myself want it. Now, I'm like, I'll just wait till I get home. I can just wait because I can, you know. Or, and, and it's beautiful. It's like. If I can do this, if God can do this kind of work in me, he can do it for anybody. Trust me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Girl, I'm so proud of you, though. But again, you <laughs> brought up you. another valid point. You brought up another valid point, right? First of all, <laughs> it, you know, I think we make health and wellness so difficult. It's really simple. It's really simple. We make it hard, right? But you mm-hmm. taking it one step at a time. Your step right now is being more intentional about what you put in your body. Yes, you join the gym and exercise, but right now you are focused on being more intentional about what you're putting inside your body, what you're feeding yourself. And so that's a very great point. And for those of y'all who are listening who are live streaming and those who catch the replay, I hope you caught that as well. You know, it's not difficult. It's simple. And you have to just take it one step at a time. Focus on one major thing you're trying to change at a time. So I thank you, Leslie, for bringing that up because that's key when we talk about self-awareness and activating the warrior, that fighting spirit in you, to overcome an illness or a disease or dis-ease, right? Because there's mental, uh-huh. emotional, financial, and all these other different kinds of dis-ease, right? That is very yeah. key. So in your opinion, and I think we might have covered this. Um, I think in a roundabout way we did cover this, but it is a challenge for a lot of people to conquer that which is keeping them from being the healthiest version of themselves that they can be, right? And Mm -hmm. so why do you believe that that's a challenge? And we touched on this a little bit. Maybe they're not intentional. Maybe they're trying to do do things that don't agree with who they are and their uniqueness, a unique situation. But, yeah, um, there's so many reasons, so many reasons, you know. Yes, yes, yes. And I think the first thing, you know, you cannot change what you do not acknowledge. So acknowledgement is, is key. And that acknowledgement means that that might be where you sit for a minute. You might not can do anything about it right now, or you feel like you can't do anything about it. But when you acknowledge the things in your life that are keeping you from living your best life, that are keeping you from fulfilling your purpose, that are keeping you in a uh, negative space or in a uh, mentally trapped space, if you acknowledging that, and then surrendering that to God. And, and even if that's through journaling, if that's just through reading or just sitting and meditating and thinking about not the issue, not dwelling on that, but what it looks like on the other side of that. And then you begin to just backtrack and like, okay, what is it going to take for me? Like for me, I had to think, what is it going to take for me to lose one pound this week? That's a reduction of what, 1,000, 2,500 calories for me, Leslie, that, that I would really feel comfortable. Okay, what am I eating? 
that could do that. Well, you know, soda alone would, would, would take care of quite a bit of that. And so I would cut down on the sodas. And for me, that's huge. And so, but even getting to the place of, okay, why do I gravitate naturally towards sodas? Well, I don't really like water. There's no taste to it. I like to taste, you know, I like to taste the fizz and all of that. Mm -hmm. So then I went to different types of water. I tried a different, a lot of them. I didn't like them. But then there was some, and I ain't getting paid for this. We ain't getting paid for this. But Issy water worked for me. It was an alternative. Don't make it better or worse. It was just a different alternative, me taking a necessary step. And then I started right. getting the little, pouch, the little pouches of water, uh, you know, the little flavored uh, pouches to put in the water. And I found out right. I like pomegranate and fruit punch. So I started doing that. And then I realized I like my water cold. Let me try really. So it was just a series of changing. And mind you, I haven't even talked about uh, food yet. It was just that conscious decision. And as you're meditating, certain things will come to your mind. And that's what you focus on. We didn't get this way overnight, so we're not going to solve it overnight. But if we acknowledge where we are, take that to God in prayer. He will. He understands us better than we understand ourselves. And it's like, okay, God, you can really help me. I'm serious this time. Like, you know, we got to say this time because we, we done said it before. You know, we yeah. got to and, you know, but just being conscious. And he will begin to, the Holy Spirit will begin to help you on the path if you're truly surrendered to the process. So I would say to anybody, wherever you're at right now, like you said, whatever disease you're feeling in your life, acknowledge that and just be intentional. Have that big girl conversation, that grown black woman conversation with yourself. No buts, no ifs, no nothing. This is where I'm at. This is where I want to be. And how can I get there? That's right. And for our men folks, have that grown man conversation with yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I, you know, and I think I've shared this with you before, but my listeners already know how in January of 2020, I went on a 21 day uh, fast and was like, and that fast, my prayer for that fast was, Lord, help me on this journey. Take away food that whatever it is, whether it's in my body, I put in my body, on my whatever it is. If it is not beneficial to me, to my health, to my healing, my wellness, if it ain't nourishing to me, take the taste out my mouth. And I'm here to tell you, he will do it. He will yes. do it. You know? Yes, he will. And so, yeah. So, you know, you got to go to God because he's the one that's going to help. He is, he is, he, look, we already know he's our help, right? We Absolutely. know that his wish for us is to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Absolutely. Prosper. So, you know, he bore all sickness and disease on the cross along with our sin, right? So all we got to do is go to him. He said, you know, be anxious for nothing but in everything. With prayer and thanksgiving, make our requests known to him. And that's what I did. I said, Lord, I don't ever want to go through that again. I want to be healthy. I want to stay healed. You healed me. You know, show me how to preserve and maintain my healing. Because yes. it's work. Yes. You are actually, it's work. Faith without works is dead. We want to be healed, but we, either two things. We want to be healed, but don't want to give up what made us sick in the first place. Or we want to be healed, but we don't want to do the work. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> got to make, got to come to that, as we say in the military, that decisive point and make the decision because God gives us the gift of choice, right? And yes. um, he said, you choose, choose, you choose. Not only choose you to stay who you will serve, but you choose to live or to die. Uh -huh. um, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, mean, I love it. Not, is that not like what the Bible says? He says, choose okay. life. He says, choose life. Mm -hmm. So, but That's it. anyway, That's it. Woo, but anyway, we got a few minutes left because these 45 minutes go by real quick. But real, real, real briefly. So going forward, because now you're, you're cancer free, right? You had a bout with congestive heart failure as well. So in about two yes. minutes, share a little bit about that and how you were able to overcome that. 
Well, actually, still in I, I in, in my spirit, man, I am I'm, I'm healed of of everything, but I'm still walking out my diagnosis in the natural, uh, mm-hmm. just so God can show His glory. But in my treatment, in my first diagnosis, I one of the um, uh, treatments weakened my heart, and so I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. And throughout their journey, I was on six, seven different types of medication. And so now I'm happy to say that we are down to uh, four, three medications now, uh, down to three medications. And I am on a light version of chemotherapy. Uh, and yeah, and I, I feel better than I felt in a long time, like seriously, in a long time. And I'm just walking out my healing. Like, you know, God, if God gave me the, the, the cure, and I call it the spiritual cure, I am walking it out in the natural. And it doesn't mean that even in that walking out that there won't be some bumps and, and uh, challenges along the way, but I'm hanging on to my di- I'm hanging on to my treatment from God, my complete healing in God. And that's what I hang on to every time because his word says, you know, if we, if we live on this earth, we live for God. If we die here, we die for God. So whether we live or die, it is all for God. And so I no longer see death as this, um, you know how we feel. We don't like to talk about it, but we all know we have to experience it. And so Mm -hmm. every day that I wake up now, I wake up believing that I'm here for a reason. I wake up believing that today is truly a good day. What can I do to fulfill it and live it to its fullest? And so that's just how I choose to live. And I don't I don't allow anything else to get me off track, but every day is a conscious decision to participate in my own healing. Every day is a conscious decision to bring glory and honor to God. Every day is a conscious decision to honor my temple. And yeah, that's just kind of how I I live and see life. And I could, and it's just, I look for ways to be an inspiration to other people. My challenge is uh, breast cancer, but other people have different challenges. And I would rather them look at me and be amazed that I share my testimony and look as good as I look. You hear me? (laughs) You look good, girl. I didn't realize you were still going through that. You look good. I didn't realize you were still going through that. I've been walking through it. Let me say that. I said correct. Walking through it. I didn't didn't realize you still were. Yeah, and I, I don't share that quite a lot because I don't. I choose to hang on to the words. So you know, we got to be careful what we speak. You know, that's a whole another conversation. Right. And so I'm careful right. what I speak. So you said right. survivor, I hang on to that. You said uh, conqueror, I'm that. I'm all of that. I have yeah. been diagnosed, but we have a choice to how we receive and walk out that diagnosis as opposed to the master physician and what he said. And so I'm not over spiritual. I'm just spiritual, and I believe in the word because I believe in my father. So, yeah. But look, the word says we are more than conquerors. More. Yes. yes. More than conquerors. And so, to God, glory. You know, Mike, when I was on those treatments from 2018 to 2019, they put me in the congestive heart failure as well. And, you know, uh, August, August 8th of 2019, I went into cardiac arrest as a result of the side effects of those treatments. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean... But we're here, girl. Yes. We here. We We is the giver, restorer of life, of health, and love. My ejection fraction is back to normal. So, girl, keep doing what you're doing. Yes. And I'm down from... I went from a bag full of medicines, about 11 to 14 medicines. I'm down to... Two that I take every day. No, two and a half because one is a half a tablet. Two and a half I yes. take every day, and one I take I, every other day. But I'm getting all. I'm a, look, look, look. We gonna, we gonna break. We gonna look, look, look. Yes, look. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think uh, since our last talk, uh, I'm at fifty five. I went from eighteen to fifty five for my fracture rate. Yes, honey. Well, yes. that's normal. Yes. That's normal. Yes. What? Won't he do it? <laughs> Girl, normal look, normal is fifty to seventy. Yes, that's what I said. When mind you, in March when I went, when I had um 
my, I had a little a setback. It had went down to, I don't think, like 27. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. No, I don't receive this diagnosis. No, I was I on the other end of this. And uh, they started talking all kind of things. I'm like, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. And they weren't going to let me out until my numbers hit a certain way. And they were talking about dialysis and everything. Oh, it was ugly. And I said, oh, no, this is a trick of the enemy right here. Uh-uh, I'm not having this. Three days later, how many days are we celebrate that when Jesus was raised? Three days Three later, I'm walking, day. I'm, okay, I'm walking out with my kidney functions up. I'm walking out with my blood fra- right. my and fracture rate uh, up to 55. And I said, well, what's normal? He was like, what's 60? I said, well, shoot. And he looked at me. He was just like, I, I don't understand it. I was like, that's when God does his best work, when you don't understand it. Honey. Uh, so, yes, Amen. I am. Uh, now, yes, I love, normal is 60 I to 70. Yeah. Normal is 60 yeah. to 70. I was 67 before everything. I'm back up to 55, and I'm hoping by August, when I have my repeat echo, I'll be at least back to 60. 60. Yes. I've been, I, and look, it is I've been, so. I've been, look, I, I'm in expectation. I'll be back to what I was before chemo, and that was 67%. Look. That's what, that's what I said, too. Yes. And we're going to do right. that. We are going to we do that. Do and it's just proof. Okay. It is proof that, you know, it doesn't take a, 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 it doesn't take a whole lot when you look at what the odds are. But when you focus on God and his word and you do what you know to do, God will take care of the rest. And that, it's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. That's right. That's right. So for you who are tuning in to this week's episode of Health Chat with Coach Jean, look, look, look. This is what it, this is a part of activating the warrior in you. It takes first self-awareness, all right? It is a mindset. Activating the spirit of a warrior. Look, involves faith, hope, resilience, all of that, right? But know this, it is a growth process. It is a mindset. You must have faith, believe God. Shift your perspective and say to yourself and be determined that whatever the challenge, whatever the obstacle, that it will not defeat you. You will not surrender. You will not die in that place or in your current state. And so, look, you got to believe. You got to speak it. Believe it. Speak it and repeat. Believe. Speak. Repeat. (laughs) Believe. Speak. Repeat. Look, Leslie, we got one minute before we got to shut it down. How can the people get in contact with you? Oh, I have enjoyed myself. Thank you so much, Coach Nurse Jean. Uh, Warrior, you can reach and find me on the social uh, Facebook, The Leslie Denman, Instagram, The Leslie Denman. And you can go to grownblackwomansuccess.com to learn about everything else. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here and to share. I have also been inspired, and I just keep doing what you're doing. And God richly bless your the work of your hands because you are truly an inspiration to so many. Oh, to God be the glory. Thank you so much. And uh, we need to talk offline real soon, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And look to you, my listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in again this week to Health Chat with Coach G. Look, hit me up on Facebook and Instagram at Health Chat with Coach G, at LinkedIn at Nurse Coach G. My name is J E A N. And if you are in the house, Clubhouse that is, follow me at Nurse Coach 63. Again, a very special thanks to my guest. Miss Leslie Denham. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just love your spirit, the spirit of a warrior. And a shout out to my producer, the Batman of Charm City himself, Mr. Jerry Royce Live. And to you, our listening audience, once again, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Health Chat with Coach Jean. Go on all the major podcast platforms and share tonight's episode with someone you know. And until next time, if God says the same, peace and health, deuces.
Thank you for joining us for another episode here in the chat room. Health Chat with Coach Jean, that is. Until next time, if God says the same, I pray peace, health, love, and well-being for you and your family. God bless you. You are listening to Jerry.